Hey guys, just want to come on real quick and record a quick video uh, explaining kind of my thought process on how I go about building ships. A lot of you people have been asking uh, for a tutorial on how to build ships. Uh, they're not really asking about, you know, like how do you put on pieces together, what is cargo, what is shield, things like that. Uh, they're mainly asking about uh, what it takes to make a ship and how to be happy with the result. So I'm hoping I can't shed some light on to kind of my thought process and how I go about building ships. So this is something I built. It's pretty rough. It's pretty boxy. Uh, I'm not overall very happy with, with the result. I'm probably going to go to different star yards and try putting on different pieces from different manufacturers. This is all built in the Deimos star yard orbiting Mars. So um, it's pretty rough right now, but it gets the job done. It's got really great cargo capacity, pretty decent shields. Its weaponry can be a bit more, but as a freighter, um, it's kind of just, it's, it, it is what it needs to be. Um, and so step one in building a ship is to kind of understand what you are planning for. What do you need this ship for where you are in the game? Now, I'm currently in the mid game, so uh, I need a ship that can help me build outposts and carry the required materials that I need to kind of get each outpost started. Um, so that's what this is for. Now, you might be in the early game and you want a fighter, or you might be in the mid game and you want like a, a like mid-sized cruiser. You could be in the late game and you want like a nice battleship without having to buy one because you really want to get into this, this, the shipbuilding aspect of the game. So second thing you need to think about when building ships are your perks. Uh, what perks do you have unlocked and what perks do you plan to have unlocked soon? It doesn't make much sense to plan too far ahead because by that time uh, you might need a different ship than what you're building right now. So just kind of build what you need for now and then you can upgrade it later. So if you look at my skill tree right here, I have piloting rank 4, so I have access to class C ships, but I don't have any points put into the ship command. So it doesn't really make sense for me to build a ship that has more than 4 or 5 crew spots uh, because I simply won't need it. And when I do access this skill point, or this, this perk, um, I'll probably need a different ship. So things like battleships or large cruisers wouldn't really make sense for me to build right now. Now actually getting into the ship design, the first thing I do is I start with the bay. I like to build from the bottom to the top, from the entrance to the exit. So that means from the bay to the docker. Now kind of plan out how you want your ship to look. Just kind of visualize it. Now you can play with it as you build, um, but it definitely helps the earlier you do it, the more modifications you do in the beginning, the easier. So I like to start with the landing bay, and I'm just going to flip this around because there are a lot of ships that have the landing bay facing front, so let's go ahead and just flip it around. The second thing I like to do is I like to imagine how the ship might feel from the inside. Uh, look, how, you, how it feels from the inside is equally as important as how it looks on the outside, because you're going to be walking around this thing and you want to be happy with how it feels. So I like to go for a little more immersion, and when I think about it, the first thing you do when you get into your ship is you unload your gear. Or the first thing you do when you exit your ship is you load up on your gear. So I like to go to the HABs and I go through the HABs, see what's available in this starport, and I kind of play with the idea of what goes where. Now, going with what I just said, I like to put an armory first. I like to put an armory to connect to the landing bay. Now, if you look at this landing bay, not all of them are the same. Some of them have ladders, some of them have doors. This one has a ladder going up towards the back. So. That means that the entrance to the ship will be in this part of the armory. Something else to consider when building your ship is where do you want your captain's quarters, if you want a captain's quarters. Now the captain's quarters, I imagine, is someplace secluded just for you, you the captain, and whatever your romantic interest is. So it, likes, it needs to be somewhere nice and secluded, away from the hubbub, uh, so not don't have it lead into a lot of busy areas like living quarters or all-in-one berths. I like to have it in either the top ship or the bottom of the ship, um, kind of away from everything else. So on that note, I'm going to put a captain's quarters leading into the armory. Hopefully, uh, if this all goes correctly, the only entrance into the captain's quarters will be through the armory at the bottom of the ship. Now the way HABs work, it's kind of weird, this is not an exact science, but it usually works, is that when you place a HAB, the hab you place will connect to the last hab you interacted with, meaning that because I interacted with the armory last, the the captain's quarters will connect to the armory. Right? I'm gonna put a companion way right behind here, 
just as uh, just to put a little breathing room when I put extra halves. Um, I did pre-build this, so I, I do know where I'm gonna put stuff. So uh, that's why I kind of know I want this here. But because when I put this here, the last half I interacted with was the captain's quarters. Well, this doesn't connect to the captain's quarters, so the next half after that I interacted with was the armory. So this will then connect to the armory. Then I'm gonna put an all-in-one berth right above that. So this is connected to the armory and to the companionway, but because the companionway was the last half I interacted with, there will be a ladder connecting the companionway to this all-in-one berth. Now following that logic is pretty simple. If I put a, a computer core there, the computer core will connect to the companionway. And if I put an infirmary, the infirmary will connect to the companionway. There are some cases in which the connections won't always be following that rule. Um, that might be if there's too many connections or if you have a docker or uh, some other exit that might be blocking the way. Another thing I try to consider is I never want to have um, three floors using the same ladder. Meaning that if there's a ladder here connecting to this one, I don't then want a ladder connecting on top of that. That's because what getting on and off the ladder is pretty hard. You have to kind of like time the animation right, the climbing animation, and if you want to drop you'll take fall damage. And if you have a boost pack it'll pretty hard, it's pretty hard to, if you want to skip the animation you want a boost pack, it's pretty hard to to time it and get it just right. So I typically like to have ladders only going up one story at a time. Just something to keep in mind. So from there, just going along with my build, contrary to popular belief, or how it might be named, the living quarters is not actually where people live. It's kind of more where the, your your uh, your crew will rest and eat and drink. Uh, sleeping quarters are mainly going to be the all-in-one berths, although beds are kind of scattered, scattered all around the ship. Sometimes you'll even find your crew in your captain's quarters, which is pretty immersion-breaking, but it's Bethesda. So next I'm going to put a control station. I like to have a control station that leads into the cockpit. It just kind of makes sense um, thematically and immersionally. Immersion? It, it, it lends to the immersion. Uh, having the control station lead into the cockpit. Now you can build it however you want. Uh, that's just how I like to do it. Next, just to mix things up, I'm going to put a 3x1 all-in-one berth up top here. Now because the last half I interacted with that connects uh, to the all-in-one berth is uh, going to be the living quarters, there's actually going to be a ladder from this living quarter to this all-in-one berth. Even though this is right there. And then next to the all-in-one berth, I'm going to put another living quarters right there. Now these two living quarters will be identical inside unless I do something to play with and mess with the interior of the ship by, from the outside. And I will do that in a moment. Next I want a workshop. And a science lab. This way I'm using every single 2 by one Now you might not need to or even want to depending on your ship and the size of your ship but because this is going to be a mid-class uh, freighter, I, I, I'm okay with using all of these halves. Now I would love to use these larger halves like a battle station, which is the larger version of the control station, or a brig, or even the cargo hall, seeing that this is a cargo freighter, uh, but it doesn't really fit the size of this ship that I'm kind of going for. But, of course, feel free to edit and post edits and all that. Now that we have all the halves done, let's look at all the essentials that we need to put in to make the ship flyable. We need a docker, engines, grab drives, gears, reactors, all that. So let's go ahead and go through the list and kind of just put things that if you need. I'm going to go ahead and use this class C driver because this is a freighter and I need the strong engines so the strongest engines I can get are class C. So I'm going to use a class C reactor because of that. Looking at our grab drives, I don't have access to any Class C grab drives, so, but the strongest grab drive I can get are these Aurora 12G grab drives and the RD2000 beta grab drives. Both are pretty identical in stats, 
This is the uh, two, the RT2000 beta grab drive is slightly better, but I want to have access to uh, a module attached to the back of the grab drive, so I'm going to go ahead and use the Aurora 12G. Next, we're going to put on some engines. Because this is going to be a freighter, I need really strong engines to make sure the ship is still maneuverable and fast enough uh, for combat or fleeing. So because of its size, I'm going to have to put four of these just to support this ship. Now something I like to consider when building a ship is not everything has to be attached on the outside. Sometimes you want to put maybe a space here. I have two living quarters here. Maybe it's okay to have a space in the middle where I can tuck uh, modules so they're hidden from view. Um, I didn't do that here because I liked the hallway uh, theme coming from all the way back here. You can see a full hallway. Something to consider though is that if this is your cockpit, you have to walk quite the distance up to, to uh, deboard or board another ship or quite the distance down if you want to take the, uh, the the landing bay exit. So sometimes you might want to put the, the exits near the cockpit just for ease of use. Now on that note, I like to have this little space between my engines for this particular build because now I can tuck in my shields and my fuel tanks into that little cubby. Now using Class C shields, because I have access to them, I'm going to use these. And taking note before we begin, the next part, uh, our jump range currently is 22 light years. If I put on these fuel tanks, these let's say H10 Atlas Helium-3 tanks, our jump range remains at 22. However, if I put on the H30 Atlas Helium-3 tanks, our jump range decreases. Even though our fuel capacity nearly doubled, uh, our jump range actually decreased due to the increased mass. There is an equation, I'm not quite sure what it is when it comes to mass versus uh, jump thrust versus uh, engine thrust that affects a whole number of aspects of the ship. I'm not sure exactly what the, the math is, but that's something to keep in mind. So because it doesn't make a difference, I'm going to use these uh, H10s. We're nearly done. Something else we need is a docker. I'm going to put the docker up here just so it matches the bottom. You obviously don't have to. I'm going for a very specific silhouette, a very specific look where I want the top to be symmetrical to the bottom. It's The overall shape is going to uh, go from a tip. It's going to grow up here and then it's going to curve back down and then it's going to grow back up again from the engines. Next let's go ahead and put in our our structural components just to complete the shape of the ship. You might think wait a minute there's still more to do before the structures uh, like landing gears. However, landing gears, the quality and quantity of the landing gears you use depends on the overall mass of the ship. So I like to do landing gears last because I'm not yet sure uh, what the overall mass is going to be when you add on all the structures and all the cargo bays. That's just how I like to do it. Some people like to do it different, uh, but it just kind of makes sense to me. Now, I think our structures are all done, so now we're going to go and put in our cargo bays. For this particular build, because I'm going to have a lot of cargo bays, I don't want to, or I don't need to use the biggest cargo bays because for the look I'm trying to achieve, qual quantity is more important than quality. Because I'm going to be filling in a lot of empty space with cargo holds.
Next, going back to our structures, I'm gonna put some mounts for weapons and to kind of break up the, sh the boxy shape just a little bit. Obviously, I probably should do a little more, um, but for this build, I think it works okay. If you guys watched uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans, the kind of shape I was initially trying to go for was the Hatsurobi, or I think that's how you call it. Um, it's the second ship that they get in the second season, um, and I was trying to achieve that kind of shape, but in order to have this many cargo sh uh, holds, I needed more engines, so I had to break up the shape and add more engines. It still doesn't look terrible. It's a little too boxy for my taste, but to each his own. Now, again, if you remember, I said this living quarters and the living quarters hiding behind here are going to be the exact same interiorly, interiorly on the inside, unless I can do something to break up the, the interior from the outside. And I'm going to do that using windows. So whatever tables or desks or countertops that were going to be here will be removed and replaced with windows. The captain's quarters, you might think, would look really nice with windows. It's a nice place to relax and have uh, some place to look out of. However, the captain's quarters does have a very few but very unique assets like couches and desks and conference room type situations. And by adding windows, you actually break up that 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 um, the aesthetic. So I I'm not going to add any. Now that is pretty much the overall ship. So now I can finally add the gears, the landing gears. Now I think for this specific build, due to the mass, I will need five landing gears. Now something I did not consider when I first built this ship is the landing bay is leading towards the back, which is cool because I have this landing gear here so if I had it towards the front uh, it would have been you would have walking out straight into the landing gear that doesn't make much sense however now it walks straight out into the engine and I haven't yet tested that to see if that works what I may end up having to do is raise this engine up and raising these engines up and so on and so forth but for now this is fine I just wanted to walk you through uh, the thought process and what I kind of go through when I build the ship. And with that, the ship is done. All that's left is to add some weapons, um, but I'm a little short on cash, so let's see what I can add. Now, I won't go in too in depth about the weapons, I'm sure it's pretty self explanatory. Um, I will say this that the auto weapons versus the non auto weapons are different functionally in that the auto weapons have a charge and as long as you have a charge you can fire very quickly with a fast rate of fire however once that charge depletes as you shoot uh, your charge uh, rate of fire your rate of fire decreases dramatically um, so you're shooting as quickly as the as the charge refills which is pretty slow so I prefer the non-automatic versions that shoot at a constant rate of fire depending on how many uh, uh, reactor power you put into that weapon system. So I also prefer the PV uh, weapon system, the PARs, the Particle Weapon Energy Systems, I forgot the exact names. Um, but that's because they have equal damage on shields and hull. They're not better at one or the other. Um, they're kind of jack of all trades, but they do work very well, especially in early and mid game. Um, and it's it's simple to not have to shift your energy back and forth between weapon systems. Um, and something else, how I like to play, this is not really related to shipbuilding, is I like to maximize my power into engine and shields, and whatever energy I have left, I put into my weapon system, with the exception of one where I save for my grab drive. That's just how I play. I don't know if that's advisable. Um, it's worked out pretty well for me so far. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is the build. I hope I helped with uh, with my thought process and how I built it. Something before we end to 
to, uh, to talk about though is that you might see the max crew is six. Now you might think, well, that's fine. That makes sense because you have two crew station and you have um, you have two crew stations from your cockpit and you have four crew stations from your control station. Well, that's not exactly correct. So something that a lot of people didn't know is that your crew actually needs something to work on. So even though you have crew space for six, if they don't have enough um, things to work on, then the crew limit will not be whatever the sum of your crew stations are. So weapons add to that count. You see at the bottom of this, this um, chart, this info panel on the left side, crew capacity is 0.5. So crew capacity is different than crew stations. So crew capacity technically means, I don't, I don't know the correct term for it, but they add up to be one. Each weapon system is 0.5, so two weapons means one crew member. If I take out two weapons, it reduces down to five. Put them back, it comes back to six. Things, also, other things that increase your crew size is your engines, which add 0 0.5, 0 0.25, so you need four engines in order to add one crew member. Shields, reactors, reactors add one crew capacity, so one reactor means one crew member. Shields add 0.5, so one shield is half a crew member, and so on and so forth. So this has, this build has four weapons, so that's two crew members. It has one shield, so that's two and a half. It has uh, four engines, so that's, oh goodness, three and a half. Um, so on and so forth. So I hope that helped. I hope I explained some stuff you might not have known or gotten from other YouTube videos. Um, and thanks for watching. Bye bye.